Okay, that should be 16 diamonds at this point. I should be a shoe in to be winning this competition we have going on right now. Let's just go ahead and check the scores, see how we're doing. What? Who the heck is Noob Slayer 69? Oh, come on! Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Mudkip Ninja here with another Command Basics tutorial video today. And if you couldn't tell from the intro, today we're going to be tackling the very intricate command of scoreboards, or the slash scoreboard command with a whole bunch of different parameters. Now, the reason I wanted to tackle this today is because I've actually had the script for this in the works for a while, and because I have the next major how to make a boss in vanilla Minecraft video coming out as the next sort of big production video on the channel, I realized that just before that, we probably should have a quick rundown on how scoreboards actually work, as that was one of the most requested comments and sort of breakdowns from the original Pumpkin boss tutorial, is how does this scoreboard work? How does the time of day scoreboard work? Why doesn't the Pumpkin scoreboard go away? So on and so forth. I realized I actually kind of glazed over scoreboards a lot in that video. But no worries, today we're actually going to be breaking them down one parameter at a time. Now, scoreboards are your best friend when it comes to storing data and performing remote triggers in Minecraft. They're extremely versatile, but also can be a bit complex to understand. So we're actually going to break down the command itself, parameter by parameter, so we know the foundation to expand upon them later. This is definitely going to be my longest Command Basics video, and I'm even thinking about making an advanced scoreboards Command Basics video after this one at some point in the future, as there are a whole bunch of things you can do with this command. But I figured we need to get all of the basics out of the way just so we understand it going forward for our future videos. So first off, some theory. What is a scoreboard, and why do we need it? Well, scoreboards are behind-the-scenes systems that can help keep track of things like points a player may have at a specific task. You can think of them as their namesake, a large basketball scoreboard that shows us how many points each team has. From there, we can use things like if statements and math to compare those scores to values that we set, and use that outcome to trigger things. Things like commands that trigger when a person reaches a certain score, or like locks to gate players from doing something unless they have a certain score. I'll break down the command parameter at a time, but just know that scoreboards keep track of events in the game that are called objectives. If, at a basketball game, the scoreboard is the thing that keeps track of the score, then the objective is what the scoreboard is actually tracking. So in that case, putting balls in hoops. Scoreboards themselves will come up time and time again in things like boss tutorials and map makings, and there is a bit more minutia that we'll delve into as it presents itself, but as for the basics, that's how scoreboards function. Okay, so starting off, let's take a look at the actual command itself. So if we go ahead and type in slash scoreboard, you'll notice we have two options here. We're going to be working with objectives for now, and then we'll work into players later, as players won't actually do anything until we have a scoreboard set up. We'll go down the list from here. Scoreboard objectives add will start the process of making our own scoreboard. Remember, before we can compare any values or set any points, we first have to make sure we create our scoreboard from scratch using this add. So let's just continue for now and name our first objective. This is just what the game will refer to it as, so make it something short and memorable. For now, I'll actually just call it first objective. A reminder that whatever it is has to be all one word. We can change what this looks like to the player in just a second. Okay, now that we've set up our first objective, we actually need a criteria for the objective to track. This is the thing that will actually be incrementing the points of the scoreboard. Lucky for us, Minecraft has a ton of built-in criteria that the game already uses to track things for advancements, like if you've crafted a certain item or how many times you've died. We'll start simple and make our criteria be Minecraft dot mind colon minecraft dot grass block just like that as you might have guessed this objective will now be tracking every time the criteria of breaking a grass block is met Finally, if you plan on displaying your scoreboard visually to your players, you can give it an actual display name. You won't need to add this if you're making back-end scoreboards, but for our demo, we'll be displaying everything. So I'll name it Grass Destroyed. Because it's a string, you have to add a set of quotes as well. And there we go. If I press enter, our first scoreboard has been created. Now if I switch back to survival, any time I mine one of these grass blocks, our scoreboard will be incremented. But as you may notice, we aren't getting a visual representation of that anywhere on our screen. That's because we still have to set the display space for our scoreboard. Minecraft doesn't do this automatically. But we'll get to that in just a second. If we go back to our slash scoreboard objectives path, now we can use our next parameter. 
list. This one will simply show us a list of all of our created scoreboards in the current world. As you can see, I have the one we just created, first objective if I mouse over this grass destroyed because that's the display name we gave it, and then a few others, one for the intro of the video, Diamond's Mind, and another one for something else I was working on. As a note, if you are someone that uses data packs in your world, all of the scoreboards added by those data packs will also show up here, and that can look a bit confusing, especially if you don't recognize any of them, so just keep that in mind. Next up, we have the modify parameter. This lets us make small changes to our scoreboard objective if we need to. You'll notice we only have two options to modify, the first being the display name, which is what the players will see, and the second being render type. You won't have to worry about this one too much, but just know that you can switch a scoreboard to track its value in hearts instead of a number or integer. Next, the remove parameter will completely delete a scoreboard objective. Useful if you make a mistake with your criteria, but be warned you can't undo this. And finally, the one we need to help us display our objective is the set display parameter. This parameter determines how our scoreboard will look to the player if we decide to show it. I'll give a brief rundown of the different options. Below name will actually render the display name and points of your scoreboard objective just underneath a player's name. Useful for PvP scenarios if you want to track kills underneath players, but it doesn't make any sense to do in single player. List will just add the numeric value of the score to the player list when you hold tab. This won't show any display names at all, and will just have a number next to a player's username. Useful if you want to track things like deaths. Sidebar is the most common, and the one you've probably seen if you've played on large multiplayer servers like Hypixel. This is the one we're going to use, as it shows up all the time for players on the side of their screen. And as you notice, you can also set the sidebar for a specific color team, rather than have everyone see it at once. But don't worry about teams right now. So if we go ahead and select sidebar, and then the objective we want to display, and press enter, you'll notice our scoreboard will now show up on the right. And it's tracking our first objective, which we've set the display name to be grass destroyed. As a note, if you're messing around with this on your own and the scoreboard doesn't show up, don't panic. Scoreboards won't render a display until at least one player or entity has a score value for that objective. For example, if I quick reset, my scores for first objective, you'll see the scoreboard disappear. It didn't delete the objective, but because there's no points to display, it doesn't render. So there you have it. Now if you watch the scoreboard as I break grass, the number automatically increments. Now you have a way of keeping track of virtually any statistic within Minecraft and showing it visually to your players. So that's all well and good, but now what do we do with that information? Unless our goal is to just show a leaderboard of the best grass breaker in all the land, we need to take this a step further. That's where slash scoreboard players comes into play. Ugh, sorry for that one. Now you'll see there's a lot more parameters to go through. Most of these will just modify the score value of a player manually, which is useful for testing or comparing. For example, if we go through the add parameter here, you can see that I can manually add points to a player, to whatever objective I want, and whatever value I want. So for example, I could just add two. This is most useful when we get into triggers and dummy scoreboards, but we don't need to get there yet. And as you notice, it actually increments on the displayed scoreboard itself. If we change this to remove, it will subtract the value instead of add it. Get will get you the specific score from a specific player or group of players for a specific objective. As you can see, it's returned I have five. List will tell you all the scores of all of the objectives from a specific player. For example, you can see I have 16 diamonds mined and 5 grass destroyed. Set will forcibly set a player or group of players score for any given objective. For example, I could force set my own to, from grass destroyed to be 10. And reset will completely reset a player's score back to nothing. Note, this doesn't reset it to zero. This is the same thing as deleting a player from a list of an objective, and they'll have to start earning points all over again. Operation is where things start to get interesting, but I think I'll cover this in an advanced scoreboard video, as this kind of goes beyond the basics and can take a little bit to explain. Finally, we have enable. This one is really an edge case, and is only used for more advanced uses of the scoreboard command. Once again, I'll probably look into this in an advanced scoreboard command basics, but as an incredibly brief explanation, this enables a player to trigger the specific scoreboard objective manually using the slash trigger command. But enough about that. Now that we know how to create our own scoreboard objective and how to manually manipulate it to test, Let's walk through a bit more of the core of objectives, which are its multi-layered criteria. 
So what are the different criteria Minecraft can check for a scoreboard? Well, besides checking all actions a player can perform, like mining or crafting, there are actually some unique trackers as well, which I'll briefly go over here. This one, Dummy, will actually jump back to at the end, as this is the most useful and dynamic, in my opinion. But up top, we have Air. This tracks the amount of air a swimming player has left. Armor tracks a player's armor value. Next is Death Count, pretty self-explanatory, tracks whenever a player dies. Down here is Food. This one tracks a player's remaining food score. And then of course health, very similar to food, but will track a player's health. This one is actually very useful for any type of event tracking in the game, as it returns the exact health of a player. For example, you could decide that once a player's health reaches one, or half a heart, they'll be teleported to safety via a command block. These killed by ones we're going to skip over for now, as we're not going to be talking about teams in this video, but they're pretty self-explanatory, or you can go ahead and look on the wiki. Next up is Level. This one tracks a current player's XP value, very useful for tracking integers, as it already is an integer that the player can see on their screen. Then we have all the statistics that I mentioned before, things like breaking items, crafting items, using items, so on and so forth. Then at the end of that we have Player Kill Count. This one's simple, in that it tracks whenever a player kills another player. Uh, we also have Total Kill Count, which tracks not only player kills, but also when a player kills any mob. Then we have Trigger. I mentioned Trigger earlier, and this criteria is a lot like the Blank Dummy criteria, but it can only be triggered via commands. The usefulness here is as long as a player has been enabled for a certain scoreboard, they can increment it on their own. I might explain why this is useful in an advanced scoreboards video, but for the basics, just know that this is something you can do. There is also XP, which works largely like level, but instead of the actual numerical level that it tracks, it tracks the number of XP that the player has. Okay, so that's all of the base criteria for scoreboards. Let's get back to the dummy criteria. This is the meat and potatoes of map makers using scoreboards. While the other criteria are great to check, sometimes they're a bit too specific for a map maker's needs. For example, you'll notice none of the criteria included things like time of day, or if a player has already been to a dungeon or area. So for more unique uses, we can use the dummy criteria because it is simply a blank criteria that can be incremented by whatever means we see fit. For example here, let's set up a scoreboard that increments by every one tick as long as there is a pig within 10 blocks of this repeating command block. To start, we'll do slash scoreboard objectives add, just like before, and then we'll just call this something simple like pig detect. And then the criteria, of course, will be dummy, as that's what we're showing off. Now, normally you wouldn't need a display name for backend things like this, but again, because this is a demo, we will just put pig detect in quotes as the display name. And there we go. Now, this scoreboard that we've created won't increase or decrease at all right now until we use a command block to make it do so manually. So, inside this repeating command block, let's write an execute command that checks for any nearby pigs. So, we would write slash execute if entity at e for an entity. We're checking the type of entity is a pig, and then we also want to check the max distance is within 10 blocks. So, we'll put two dots and then the 10. And then as this one is just a test, we'll put run, say, true. For now, this will just detect if there is a pig within 10 blocks. This has nothing to do with our scoreboard just yet. So let's just check this works. So if I go ahead and put a pig within 10 blocks of this command block, we should see a little message pop up in our chat that gets spammed because it's set to always active being true. And now if this pig kindly wanders off more than 10 blocks away from this original command block, eventually the log will clear itself, and the test will no longer ring true. Just like that. Okay, now we want the scoreboard that we made to increment whenever that pig is near this block. So first, let's go ahead and make the set display of our pig detect objective to the sidebar so we can actually see it. So we'll do scoreboard objectives set display sidebar, and then we'll go down to pig detect. And there we go. And then if we go into the command block, we can actually change this last part instead of just a say test to increment our scoreboard. So something like scoreboard players add dummy pig detect. And we want to increment it by one. And because this is a repeating command block, this will be one point every tick or 20 points every second. Now, before I set this going here, there's one last thing to mention. I had the command call for a player that doesn't exist and named him dummy. Like I've mentioned, I'm in single player right now, so there should be no other players around. Lucky for us, Minecraft actually lets us do this, and will create a scoreboard for our fake player named Dummy, 
without us worrying about using a real player. In theory, you could actually name this anything, but I always go with dummy, so I remember that all of my dummy scores are set to one player named dummy. Long story short, you don't need to track scores on real players. You can track them on fake players and name them whatever you want, so long as you remember. Now, if we go ahead and set this to always active again and press done and put a pig within 10 blocks, you can see, sure enough, the pig detect scoreboard is working. It's incrementing by one tick for every tick the pig is within 10 blocks of this command block, and as soon as they walk away, it stops. Awesome. But why use dummy scoreboards at all? Surely our slash say execute command from before is enough to let us know that there was a pig nearby just by saying true. Well, the beauty of dummy scoreboards is we can now use this number to trigger other events, more often than not, using time. For example, you could have a lightning bolt strike the earth whenever the scoreboard reaches 400 as some sort of dodging minigame. Or, once the scoreboard reaches 100 ticks, you could teleport all pigs around it elsewhere and use it as some sort of test mechanism to see how quickly it takes for pigs to wander back towards the command block. The point is, you can virtually test for anything in Minecraft using dummy scoreboards. And that's just gonna do it. That wraps up our Command Basics video on learning about scoreboards. I realized it was a bit of a longer one, and there's even more to learn, so I think in the future, if you guys want, I will make an intermediate to advanced scoreboards video where we can learn all about operators and get into a bit more of the minutia of certain criteria, like tracking statistics in Minecraft as well. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with scoreboards that I'm now I'm sure you're aware of after watching this video, and this will prep us for future videos like our boss tutorial and all sorts of cool stuff like that. So remember, if this tutorial helped you in any way, a like would be greatly appreciated. It really does help the channel grow. And if you're interested in more tutorialized Minecraft-related content, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And hey, did you know we have a Discord now? That's pretty cool. The link is in the description below. And in addition, I would like to thank my level 4 Kip patron, Ashley Bladen for helping support the channel. You rock. All right, guys, we have some really great videos in the works and you really know what's on deck next. And remember, until next time, si What? <laughs> uh, hang on a sec. Uh, I don't remember putting that slime there. This was the little cave thing I made for the intro. Noob? <laughs> was that you? What? What? N no. Uh, where did all this slime come from? Th this doesn't make any sense. What? <laughs> what? No, that's impossible. I, I defeated you. I, I can't move. Hang on, just- No!